Today we're going to combine the powers of Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator to create a diamond embellished text effect. Illustrator will be used to produce the initial layout with the help of a couple of third party scripts. Then we'll transfer the artwork over to Photoshop to add some finishing touches and really bring the effect to life. Now you wouldn't believe how many hours I spent scratching my head trying to figure out how to lay out a series of circle shapes to represent these diamonds. There was the manual method which would mean tediously placing each one individually, but I knew there had to be a better solution. Illustrator's simple spray tool came to mind, but the problem was there was no way of stopping it from overlapping the shapes. A simple collision detection option would have made that tool perfect. The light bulb moment came when I stumbled across some freely available scripts online. These clever tools allow you to do things that just aren't possible in the standard Illustrator application. The two we're going to make use of in this tutorial are named Circle, Fill and Copy to Multiple Objects. Links to both are down in the description area. You can find more detailed instructions on how to install scripts online, but for Mac users head to the Applications folder and dig down through the Illustrator files to Presets and Scripts, then paste the files in there. So boot up Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. I'm using a simple A4 sized landscape artboard. Select the type tool and enter your chosen wording in your preferred font. I'm using one of my favourite go-to freebie fonts, League Gothic. Right click and select create outlines to convert the text into shapes. Switch the fill and strokes around in the bottom of the toolbar, then right click and select ungroup to break the letters apart. The circle fill script only works with one object at a time, so select the first letter and then go to file, scripts and circle fill. Now what this script does is fill your chosen shape with circles as its name suggests. You can configure the settings to determine the sizing of the dots. I went with 4% max, 3% min and 1 point space in between them. Repeat the process for each individual letter to quickly fill them all with placeholders for our little diamantes. This script saved us loads of work, but it does leave a few gaps here and there. You can hold the alt key and duplicate some circles to fill these gaps. Hold the shift key while selecting all the original text outlines. We'll need them later but we don't want to accidentally select them, so go to object, lock and selection. Next we need a diamond image to replace those little black circles. You can find a PNG readily clipped with a transparent background online. Link to this one is down in the description. Now this one has some extra canvas area around the edge, which would throw off the spacing, so open it up in Photoshop and go to Image and Trim, then save it as a new PNG24 file. Back in Illustrator, go to File and Place, then select the trimmed PNG. We need this image to be embedded rather than linked for the next script to work, so open the Links panel from the Window menu and choose Embed Image from the Flyout menu. The next script, copied to multiple objects, takes the object at the top of the selection and replaces all the other items in the selection with copies of it. Since you're applying it to all these dots, it's a good time to save the document in case Illustrator crashes on you. Press Command and A to select all, and notice that the text outlines haven't been selected because they're locked. Then go to File, Scripts and Copy to Multiple Objects. Click the Yes button when asked to scale so you don't end up with supersized diamonds. Wait a minute or so while your computer fries its brains trying to process your request. Once it's done, all those black circles will have been replaced with copies of the diamond PNG graphic. It doesn't look great against a white background in Illustrator, but we can make it look a little more realistic in Photoshop. Draw a selection around all the tiny diamonds and press Command and C to copy. Switch over to Adobe Photoshop and create a new document. The size will probably be fairly small, so change the image size to around 2000 pixels under the Image and Image Size menu. Select a dark grey colour such as 161616 and press the Alt and Backspace keys to fill the background layer. Then paste in the artwork and scale it up in size. Now that diamond PNG graphic was originally about 230 pixels in size, so you can safely scale it back up without any loss of quality. Illustrator doesn't interpolate pixels, so it doesn't get rid of any when they're scaled down, meaning they're still there for when you want to scale it back up, as long as you don't go higher than its original size. Even at 2000 pixels, these little diamonds only end up with around a 30 pixel diameter. Create a new layer, then hit the D key to reset the foreground and background colours to black and white, then go to Filter, Render and Clouds. Go straight back to Filter, Render and then select Difference Clouds. Change the blending mode to soft light, then hold the command key while clicking on the thumbnail of the diamonds layer to load its selection. Apply a layer mask to the clouds layer using the selection to trim the clouds to affect only the diamonds. 
giving them a subtle change of tone to differentiate them from each other, eliminating some of the repetitiveness. Double click the diamonds layer to add some layer styles. Begin with an outer glow with the settings white, screen, 10% opacity and 16 pixel size. Then add a drop shadow with black, multiply 100% opacity, 4 pixels distance and 8 pixels size. Open up a lens flare image in Photoshop, a link to this one is in the description. Photoshop brushes ignore white, so invert the image under the image adjustments menu, then desaturate it. Go to edit and define brush preset and then close the document. Back in the main working document, create a new layer at the top of the layer stack and select the brush tool. The newly created lens flare brush will be active. Reduce its size to around 60 to 80 pixels, then open the brush panel and configure its settings with 100% size jitter and 50% minimum value under the shape dynamics tab. Then trade off between the scattering value and the spacing under the brush tip shape tab to find the settings that produce a spread of lens flares that stay roughly within the width of the diamond letters. I ended up with values of 100% spacing and 200% scattering. Trace over your letters to have Photoshop apply a scattering of lens flares. The random scatterings will often miss the diamonds, so select an eraser with a soft brush tip and go through and delete any strays that don't sit over one of the diamond graphics. It might seem like you end up deleting more than you painted in the first place, but I suppose it's marginally quicker than painting them all individually. The diamond effect could end here, but let's add one more finishing touch to complete the artwork. Switch back to Adobe Illustrator and go to Object Unlock All to release the original text outlines. Switch the strokes for a black fill, then copy and paste them into the Photoshop document at the bottom of the layer stack, just above the background layer. Scale the text to size to fit behind the diamonds, then add a stroke layer style with the settings black and around 25 pixel size. Add a new layer and then use the Command and E shortcut to merge down with this text layer to permanently apply the stroke effect, then go to 3D and new extrusion from selected layer. The Photoshop interface will switch to 3D mode, so find the properties panel to adjust the new 3D model. Change the extrusion depth to around 350 pixels, then add a 10% bevel under the cap settings. To keep things simple, leave all the other settings as their default values and hit the render icon. I actually like the slight grainy effect you get from an incomplete render, so rather than wait a couple of hours, I press the escape key after a couple of passes of that little blue square. The final effect is a really cool and quite realistic looking diamond embellished text effect. The use of Illustrator scripts took the hard work out of creating that layout of diamond graphics. Then Photoshop's tools came in handy to bring the artwork to life with subtle shading, highlights and 3D text. If you want to take this tutorial a step further, experiment more with the 3D materials to apply your diamond embellishments to gold or silver text for maximum bling. So I hope you find this tutorial useful. If you did, a thumbs up on the video or a share on social media would be a great way to help spread the word. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to my videos and stop by at my website at spoon.graphics if you want to dig into almost 10 years worth of tutorials, freebies and design inspiration. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.